Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the TV and J podcast. With me today is Troy Brittingham. We're so lonely. We are so lonely. It's just the two of us, man. Just the two of us. That's my why didn't bass you? Solo. Why did you start a podcast instead of a music career? I started a podcast instead of a music career. I'm so glad you asked. Let me get into the very specific details about it. So we watched Mandalorian episode five. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jimmy and Jay. The pirate. Arr. Is it the pirate and not the pirates? Jimmy and Jay. Interesting. Yep. Yep. yep, yep. I nodded, forgetting that we're on an audio-only format, and that the listeners can't hear me nod. Because, like, there's a lot Arr, of pirates, Arr, Troy, this right? episode be called The Pirate. Now, let me be telling ye about The Pirate. Okay. Uh, <laughs> What's your pirate name, first off? My pirate name is Old Captain Sticky Beard. All right. Well, that's a character that exists already. That's Mark Hamill. Wait, really? <laughs> yeah, it's kids next door. Oh shit! I forgot about Captain <laughs> Sticky Beard. <laughs> it, what was it? Sticky Beard or Candy Beard? It's Sticky Beard. Sticky Beard. Yeah. Uh, but he's Cummy crazy. Beard. <laughs> that's much worse. <laughs> <laughs> that might already exist in the Butt Pirates cinematic universe. Plunder the booty. <laughs> that's the tagline. <laughs> Plunder that booty. Ass Pirates, Volume 17. Get it now. Arr. So what, what happened to the pirate? <laughs> uh, What so happened th- to the... Do we, do we give the thumbs up? Thumbs down? <laughs> <laughs> you, you flashbanged me and I forgot how this podcast works. <laughs> thumbs up, Troy. How you feeling about it? I'm a thumbs up as well. I think this is the best one so this far. This is the best episode so far of the season. This is the first one that I didn't have like too many problems with. Mm-hmm. Or like, I I had a couple little problems, but yeah. like here here it feels more like nitpicky kind. Not nitpicky because there's like some things towards the end that are like, eh, they could do this a little bit better. But yeah. it, it, that's how it feels. It's they could have done this better rather than they shouldn't have done this, or they could have done it differently. Like when the the civilians are evacuating the city and they're going to the lava flats to hide, you went from an area with cover to an area with no cover. Why would they not just blow you apart right there since there's nothing around you to protect you? That felt very odd to me. It felt like an odd choice of evacuation spots. I mean, the lava flats are already established on Navarro. We already yeah. know they exist as, like, a place. So, like, I kind of get it, but at the same time, it's like, mm, that's weird. Mm. Um, well, they – they th- that's just a, a – a- situation with the planet that they made because sure Navarro's yeah. pretty flat all around yeah it's pretty flat except for the fact that it's a planet so it must be round i disagree mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. think about it jeff where would like where would the water go at the bottom of it it would just fall off you know there's this thing called gravity <laughs> sure there is anyway <laughs> let's talk about the mandalorian speaking of science fiction <laughs> <laughs> i fucking hate you <laughs> I fucking hate you so much. (laughs) Nothing pisses me off more than people who think they're being smart (laughs) when they say, like, actually, did you know gravity is still just a theory? It's like, no, that's not how theories... (laughs) A theory in science is not a theory like you have fucking fan theories about the end of Twilight. All right? You fucking... mm. We should really start saying fan hypothesis. I made myself upset with a made-up scenario that I made up. Anyway. Listen, one day you'll see the ice wall and everything will be revealed. The ice know. wall? What the fuck is this? Game of Thrones? <laughs> I guess. There's an ice wall holding everything in? Mm-hmm. Where would the water go, Jeff? Think about it. Think with your brain. I've never given the Flat Earth Theory the time of day because I don't think those people are intelligent. <laughs> no, you don't say? Fuck Flat Earthers. My, my Y'all are fucking... If you're a Flat Earther listening to this podcast, stop. My, I don't want you. My favorite thing about Flat Earth is uh, that there are multiple different Flat Earthers with multiple different theories, and they all start calling each other idiots. And I'm like, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> You're all right. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Yeah. You, you were right about one thing. That guy is dumb. We should talk about Mandalorian now. Yes. Um, definitely the best episode so far of the season. I really enjoyed... Uh, 
quite a bit of it. The fight scene throughout the city with the Mandalorians taking on the pirates, that was fucking amazing. Mm -hmm. And it makes total sense in the the lore of the show because And it's like it's choreographed really well too. And yes. I feel like that's a big that's been a problem lately with not even just the show, but like a lot of Star Wars stuff, I feel like. Bad choreography ruins a lot of fights, yeah. yeah. Um uh, was... like I had problems with the choreography when Din had the dark saber and he was taking on those weird Gamorrean guard looking shits uh, back the, in episode the, like, two like or I three. said, they're the they're the Morlocks from Time, t a time machine. Sure, those things. Um, but yeah, I, that that just looked weird and bad. So I was like, "Nah, this is gross." And um, it's, it's not even bad. It's just it's just like uninspired. It's it, it like it just could be cooler with a giant badass man made of steel. Yeah, right. And I, I like the idea that it's like uh, I I see this a lot in a lot of forms of media where it's like the the small one man army takes on the other army and mm -hmm. wins. And it's like, mm, is this believable? And then, but the problem is, there's sometimes where that's really cool. I just recently watched John Wick Four. I was gonna it's, say it's maybe the best John Wick. <laughs> yeah, it, it def. Uh, according to reviewers, it is the best John Wick. And uh, I, I haven't it's seen one, it. It's in my opinion, it's one or four, and it's entirely off of what type of vibe you want. Sure. It, and th that's the point I was going to go into. It's it's like, if you have your one-man army uh, situation, you either have to write it extremely well or you have to plan it really well where it makes sense. Mm. Sometimes they don't do that. Look at, I don't know, all nine of the Fast and Furious movies. Uh, and then there's other times where they do Well, it. that's not a one-man army. That's a family. <laughs> I'm gonna kill you. Um, but then there's other times where they do it really, really well, like John Wick, where it's written and it's established really well. Where it's like, yeah, he's one guy, but he doesn't go up against an army all at once per se. He kind of does like a Thermopylae thing where he funnels them to him, or he takes them on one at a time, Batman style, something like that. And this it makes total sense because you've got your small like squadron of Mandalorians, but they're all heavily equipped, super armored, and they're going up against pirates who are historically largely untrained warriors and i mean they they don't really give a shit too much they're just pirates you know we're just raping plundering and pillaging that's what pirates what do they do that first one in a star wars thing <laughs> i mean on disney plus not yet but like star wars is getting kind of dark when the mandalorian's first squad showed up and they landed on top of that pirate and just straight up executed him we saw that mm -hmm. we saw them just straight up execute a pirate on the ground i mean if they start getting i mean if they got a little bit darker in Andor, they could have gone that route, I feel like, but they didn't. Yeah. I mean, Star Wars is getting pretty expansive. We've got Jedi Survivor coming out soon, right. the video game, and that is, uh, ooh, uh, they're they're doing they're doing some things, and I'm pretty sure uh, Mando. What was it? Season one, we had a guy get cut in half. Yeah. So I mean, it's not too far off the realm of possibility of seeing some crazy violent shit go down. Yeah, I just, I, I feel like that specific thing would be off of the Disney table. Well, you never know. They fired the head of the Marvel Cinematic Universe recently, so mm -hmm. who knows? Who knows? Mm -hmm. Anyway, back to the pirate. Um, my Pardon. only biggest gripes with this entire episode, really, is that it seems like in an order, it, it seems like to travel... To, to have your message, and you send it to the New Republic, New Republic flies from Bumblefuck Outer Rim to Coruscant and back mm -hmm. and gets the Mandalorians, and they make a plan and fly to the Outer Rim. I feel like a lot of time should have elapsed. Well, they they, they didn't go to like the the mid-rim with um, where Coruscant is. They like sent it to a station where like a bunch of people were going to like contact Coruscant and then nobody from Coruscant came because it's too far. Well, no, he flew to Coruscant. Does he fly to Coruscant? Yes, I, because I the chick from the previous episode with the 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 espionage lady, uh what's her name? Does she not Katie O'Brien's the actress, but the recovering imperial, she's stationed on Coruscant. Are, is she not just uh, is she not just stationed on a new place in this nope, episode? Nope, 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 nope. Okay. Because uh, they they mentioned that when he's talking to the guy who looks like Jaro to Paul. Uh, so I know exactly who this character is. He's one of my favorite Star Wars characters in general. Oh, uh, is this? Uh, uh, oh God, go what? for it. Give it a try. Oh, what did Chris say his it's name was? Uh, shit, Glubson. <laughs> it's not Glubshitto. <laughs> <laughs> Glubshitto. That's what it was. No, this is. Uh, 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 Gara Zeb Aurelios. Oh, uh, it's it's Zeb from um uh uh Star Wars Rebels. 
He is one of the main six in Star Wars Rebels. He, uh, uh, voiced by Steve Bloom. Um, Steve Bloom, legendary voice actor. Uh, he's also he's also the same voice in this. Oh um, shit! No kidding. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, but it's just a little cameo from Zeb, and he translates great. <laughs> the, uh, uh, it looked great. Mm-hmm. I really enjoyed seeing him. Uh, and it, it it made me a little happy because I think it was last episode, maybe the one before that, where I was bitching about how every alien has to be a puppet because the prequels got uh, burned everybody mm-hmm. so bad, and now we've got a CGI alien. Yeah, Zeb and I was could like, this not looks good. Be a puppet. Zeb. No, you can't do a Jaro Tapal kind of guy. I don't. What, what's their species called? Uh, they are the Lasats. Lasats. I feel like that's not uh, an alien species that would have translated well to puppet mm-hmm. after our first uh, encounters they, with them. Could have done it. But it's it would have felt a little weird, especially because j- between Zeb and Jaro to Paul, we've only ever seen the computer generated version. Mm-hmm. So I think if you're gonna do a puppet, it might even it might be more jarring than just doing CGI. Like, but like he he's pretty noticeably CGI, but I still think he looks good for what he does. Oh yeah, um, it looked fine. Also in the bar uh, is uh, uh, what's his name? Um, Rick. Uh, fuck. Oh jeez. No, it's the the he's one of the directors. They it was it the Dave Filoni's in there. It's like all the directors, uh, like main directors of the show, are in there. Oh shit! No kidding. Mm, are in the bar too. Um, That's pretty cool. Yeah. So there's like a there's like a screenshot of all the Mandalorian directors in the bar with Zeb, who's like one of the most popular Rebels characters. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that made you very happy as a Rebel. It made fan. me incredibly happy. That's Zeb, awesome. Zeb is probably my second or third favorite member of that crew. Kanan's my first. I was going to say, where's Ezra and Ahsoka then? Well, Ahsoka's not really in that crew. She's in that show, but she's not in that crew. Um, it, it It's probably... Kanan is 100% my first. Kanan is in my top three favorite Star Wars characters. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. Um, not Glup Shido? He could be too. Um... But he, not Club Shadow, T O O, he could be number two, Kane and Jerry. <laughs> um, but Kane and Jerry. For anyone who's not in the loop, I'm so sorry. A uh, uh, friend of the pod and co host, Chris, uh, sent me and Troy a yeah, meme. Yeah, just discovered the meme of Club Shadow. Yeah, the meme of Club Shadow where it's like Star Wars releases anything and fans are like, OMG, I can't believe they mm-hmm. brought back Club Shadow. He's my favorite. <laughs> and then Troy and I absolutely played along. Like, oh, you don't know Glub Shido? He's like the best character ever. Yeah, it's uh, it was, it's it it's good. a it's a pretty it's a pretty old meme at this point. I think it was early Mandalorian. I don't know if it was started with Mandalorian or if it started with the Bad Batch trailer. Ever since people shat on uh, uh, episode eight, I don't interact with Star Wars social media. I don't <laughs> see the fair. memes. I don't. That's uh, fair. They, I mean, they, they bullied Rose Tico off Twitter. It's getting better again. It I is, don't believe you. It's not perfect. <laughs> it is slowly getting better again. Sure. Um, like our country is slowly getting better. Trump got arrested. Yay! <laughs> um. Anyway, back to the pirate. I think. Oh, my- but but my, I was just gonna say, uh, uh, my number one in that crew of people is Zeb, and then it's probably or Kanan, and then it's probably Kanan Zeb. Yeah, I'm gonna say Kanan Sabine Zeb. Sabine Wren? Sabine Wren. I know The other Sabine Mandalorian, Wren. yeah. Yeah, yeah, she's good. She's also good. Also had the Darksaber. You think she's going to be in the she, uh, Mando? She is... Con- I don't know if she's going to be in Mando. She is confirmed for Ahsoka, though. Well, here's the thing. So Mando Pirate, epi- this episode ends, uh, with the Mando arc anyway, of uh, Bo-Katan getting some That's stupid true. plot loophole ar- things so that she can take her helmet off again. And then uh, she has to go recruit other Mandalorians to the mm-hmm. cause. Um which sounds like a good way to introduce Sabine Wren. Sounds like a way to do Sabine Wren. And a whole new squad of Mandalorians we haven't met yet. I think it'd be cool if, just so it doesn't turn into anything that's like super, super self-referential, it would still be a little bit, uh, if they went to Clan Wren, which is established, like her, her mom and brother have like a clan of Mandalorians. Yeah. And it'd be cool if we like got them, because she's more of a rebel than she is a Mando. So they'll go to Clan Ren, like there is a Clan Vizsla or yeah. the Clan Kree. We could get a Fen Rao, maybe. Maybe this isn't going to mean anything to you, but Fen Rao's. Uh, cool. I've heard the name. Mm-hmm. Fen Rao's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I do love all the Mandalorians in Star Wars. I think all of the culty shit around Star Wars, like that's where a lot of the cool stuff is. Like the Jedi, they are a cult. Sure, we can admit it; it's fine. But they're a good guy cult, I guess. And then you have like the Empire, which is like super fucking culty. I've always liked. Mandalorian stuff, 
But Mandalorian stuff, like people who are really, really into Mandalorians, seem like they're kind of like the the edgy kid who like like they they're like the Venom fans. <laughs> show yeah, sure. To, uh, to to um like the Star Wars. I know exactly club. what you mean. Yeah, they're like they're like yeah, these guys are so cool and mysterious, and I'm like yeah, but yeah, like I feel like they they they're like kind of a little too badass for me sometimes. It does seem rather... Um, Din breaks that cycle a lot. Din does break that cycle a lot. Bo-Katan breaks that cycle quite a bit as well for us. Yeah. Um, I think the armor is like trying to, maybe. I don't know exactly what they the have in store cool, for her. The armor is cool, but the armor is in that sort of like Yeah, category. she feeds into that weird, mysterious... Mm-hmm. Pause uh, is bullshit. definitely that sort of th- vibe. Mm-hmm. But then I- I've always found it weird that like a-, a clan of people in the Star Wars universe created a whole civilization around shrouding themselves in damn near indestructible armor Mm -hmm. and they just are mostly impartial for global or not global but galactic conflicts and it's like so if you had fucking an army of the best soldiers ever and then you're just like no we're staying out of this it's like but but why (laughs) i feel like it'd be great if you if you didn't stay out of this (laughs) but then that also them being neutral kind of sort of allows them to have this rich lore that anybody can elaborate on because, oh, where were you during Yavin? It's like, well, they're neutral, so yeah, they weren't Yeah, they're, they're, the, they're the, the Spartans kind of like, uh, uh, they're like Spartan vibes, but like more like Assassin's creed Yeah, like, like they live in the shadows. They try to stay uh, far away from like conflicts yeah, and spotlights. I, I get the allure of them. Sure. It's just it, sometimes when when i know somebody and i know plenty of people i'm very close friends with somebody who very very much cares about i know somebody who plays x-wing with me sometimes and will refuse and they will admit to that yeah oh wow mhm must be a good true friend, friend yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, they have refused to play ships that are not sort of in sort of a mandalorian kind of scum and villainy of only huh yeah figures you can figures get a few out there but they only play scum so Eh, it's whatever. Um, a lot of Darth Maul. I I didn't like that she has an excuse to take the helmet off now. It felt like it was some good character development, but like I don't know. <clears throat> excuse me. I don't know how you progress the Mandalorian like cult line without them like either completely devolving into the cult. Helmets on all the time. Nobody see each other versus, you know, helmets off, the old ways are trash. You have to meld these in a harmony kind of way, which, as the armorer says, Bo-Katan walks both of these worlds. She can unite the clans. I'm wondering if that's going to open the door for, like, maybe we just get helmetless Pedro towards mm-hmm. the end of the season. So, And that's just an okay thing. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. The, Pedro Pascal has blown up since the beginning of Mandalorian. I mean, he's blown up. He blew up with the beginning of Mandalorian. Um, but since he is now a much, much bigger presence than he has been even. Um, and I feel like it makes sense for a writer to be like, let's find out in the season where he can, Dude, his, where he can see his face. Ryan Johnson's going to put him in the next, uh, Knives Out mystery, isn't he? That would be a good call, actually. Oh, that'd be so he good. Be very good for that. That'd be so good. And, and he, he can, he can kind of, pl- I think that would be good because we keep seeing him play badasses right now, but he's also very good as like a lovable doofus. Yeah, we saw that in fucking, uh, The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. Yep. He was an absolutely lovable he's, doofus. He's a huge doof in that. Yeah. And, and he's good at doing doof. Uh, he is. Uh, and he looks like he's having the time of his life. Mm-hmm. He's very, he's very funny. Oh, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, I think that that would be a cool sort of like change of pace if he did that. Um, but yeah, I would absolutely watch that. I mean, I would watch any Knives Out sequel, but. I mean, sure. I have absolute yeah. faith in Ryan Johnson. Um, but I, I, I just want to see Pedro in Knives Out, man. I feel like he'd be a really, really good cast. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just I just want to see more of Detective Blanc. Mm-hmm. Now, you see what we have here. Did I ever show you that d and of Ma Blanc? No. Oh. Uh, so it's like it's like him sitting behind the dungeon master screen, and he's like, "Now what you just did was you awoke the red dragon, whom I've specifically told you should not be awoken." <laughs> that's, how I'm, that's how I'm gonna start DMing from now on. You should DM as Detective Blanc. I feel like it'd be really, really funny. Um, it, but but what you were saying about the Mandalorians and trying to like seamlessly like put them in with each other, I will be into it if they 
really, really lean into they don't blend very well and they try to do like some conflict with it. Because I feel clan like clan wars, not even clan wars, but just sort of like yeah, we're all working together, but like, like if and and you know this is gonna be a weird take uh, for Star Wars stuff coming from me, but like if it gets kind of political. Uh, like I feel like it. Could, you would enjoy it. Yeah, I feel like I, like like the what what is what is the way sort of like season four kind of uh, or just like the last three episodes. Do you want to hear my most bad shit out there fan theory? Go for it. Bo Katan does not reclaim the dark saber from Din, but rather they rule together as king and queen. I have spoken. <laughs> I don't think that they have any real chemistry. No, like that. no, they don't. That's why it's my most wild uh, out although, there fan theory. Although it's it's a better call if they're like better call Saul. I can, you can't say it and not expect the punchline. But continue. I, I I mean, how else is she gonna get it from him unless we kill off Mando, which might make sense since Pedro is such a big actor now, mm-hmm. and Mandalorian becomes the Mandalorian Bo Katan. And it becomes the Boca Tan. What, what, what if they? What if James Cameron walks in and puts an S at the end of Mandalorian and then puts a dollar sign through it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Mando is like one of the biggest cash cows right now for yeah. uh, Star Wars and Disney uh, at large. But like, it was called the Mandalorian quite smartly because we thought it was about Din. But what if it's not? What if it's actually about Bo Katan mm-hmm. and her taking over uh, Mand- uh, Mandalore? So like, Din could die trying to protect Grogu. And uh, you know, fucking, she takes the dark saber. And and I'm I'm pretty sure at this point they're going to have her be the one who actually does rule. Now I started off this whole season being like, it yeah, has she's, to be. Yeah, I'm like, I was like, if she is, it's dumb. But now I'm kind of like, nah, that's what they're gonna do, and it's not the, what how they're doing is not the worst. Way. She had a pretty good arc, I think, no, where she, she went from like arrogant, kind of like it's my birthright, give me the dark saber, I'm gonna go fucking rule. And now it's like, no, she got humbled mm-hmm. uh, on Mandalore, seeing the ruins of where she came from. She saw the mythosaur in the waters. She kept her helmet on. She did submerge herself in the culture, and now she's got a deeper understanding and respect for what it really means to rule Mandalore. Um, especially with uh, her ally, the Armorer, talking to her and explaining some things. Like, I feel like she's gone through a pretty decent character development arc. Yeah, I which think... I, I think is the only good thing I like so far about season three is the arc of Bo Katan. I, I, I think that there is. Uh... I was thinking about this a lot recently. I think that this episode specifically did a lot of the things that I was afraid of and kind of convinced me, no, actually, they can work. Yeah. Um, uh, that and the other thing at the end of this episode is they kind of confirmed that the bad guy of the season is Moff Gideon again. Um, probably. Um, Maybe. And th- the way that they're doing that, I'm like, eh, okay, that can also be okay. Like, it's it's not the what I wanted, but... I thought that it was going to be a lot worse when it was in my head. Um, They're doing a pretty good idea, or a pretty good job, I think. Do you think Katie O'Brien's character, the recovering Imperial communications officer, do you think she's a bad guy still? Yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. I didn't know if we were on the same page there. Yeah, easy. Yeah, okay, cool. She's definitely still Imperial. And I think she's behind Moff Gideon's escape, and she planted the Beskar to divert attention. I think that's definitely where it's coming from. Yeah, you said, and I I was watching you watch the last half of the episode, and you said they they could be framed, which I was just like, oh no, there's obviously other Mandalorians out there, but sure. And like Paz Vizsla, they had that bit in the beginning of the episode. He was like, Gideon should be dead for his crimes, and it's like, okay, so are they trying to lead us down that path of like? Maybe Paz Vizsla, like, intercepted the the shuttle and killed Gideon, and that's why there's Beskar there, and that's why we can't find the I body. Mean, they, they would never kill Giancarlo Esposito off screen. I don't think so either, no. It'd be a terrible thing to do. But, like, the, I think they're Disney, or I guess the directors and writers, are trying to make us think the Mandalorians are behind it. Sure. With the little piece of Beskar that's almost too well hidden. Well, well, I think it's the opposite of, I don't think that we're supposed to think that they did it, because we've been following them this whole time. Um, but I think that it's, uh, his name is Captain Teva. Um, yeah, the, the, uh, the guy with the beard. Yeah. The rebel. Um, uh, uh, he's like he's the one good new, cop in Gotham. He's New Republic now. Um, he's he's in an X-wing wearing an orange jumpsuit. 
He's a rebel with a fancy title. I, I actually have been uh, uh, doing my Star Wars homework and uh, like listening to Star There's Wars homework? Books. Yep. I didn't study! Yeah. There's a, oh, quiz. Man. There's a quiz tomorrow. Wait, where's the button? You can do it. <laughs> anyway. Um, I'm so good at my job! <laughs> Continue. Um, but it, I think that it's just supposed to be a thing of like, he it, oh I was doing my Star Wars homework and um I uh downloaded a bunch of Star Wars audiobooks that I've been listening to and Jesus. one one is uh, really we're doing homework mm-hmm. one is uh, Alphabet Squadron um and it's Alphabet Squadron I've heard of Alphabet Squadron mm-hmm. I meant to read it uh, back in high school and I never did it's pretty cool it's not like it's not like the perfect thing it's it's a little bit more of like if you want like a sort of darker kind of war Star Wars thing it's pretty cool. Death Troopers was like that too, right? Something like that. Yeah. Um, like the the Alphabet Squadron spoilers, I guess, for this book that nobody reads. Um, the n- not nobody reads it. Um, and also their audiobooks are very cool because they have like a big cast of voice actors for all of them. Um, so like I'd hope so. It's Star Wars money you're playing. Yeah. With. It, every character has their own voice actor, and like you have like the little bleeps of like technology in the background, and like the I music. was really hoping it would just be read by Stephen Fry. <laughs> Quick to the escape pods, he said. It is not. It is not that. Um, but uh, but like you have like in action scenes like the music. <laughs> you get Ricky in. Gervais. Oh, he's done a Star Wars, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Both of those impressions were terrible, and I know it. Go, but yeah, get to your point, Troy. I'm sorry. No, you're good. Um, uh, but I was gonna say that um, uh, uh, in that like there is like. Characters are stumbling over calling themselves rebel versus new new republic. Like it's an in canon thing where they're all calling themselves rebels by accident. Oh, that's nice. Um, but um, uh, what was I going? Um, but I think that what they're going to do is uh, Captain Teva is going to, uh, because now he has been down there. He knows where they're at. Um, or no, because they did move. So I guess my no my theories out the window before I even said it. Uh, I was going to say that he now knows where they are and now he has to decide whether or not he has, he's going to rat him out or not, but they moved, so. Yeah. Never mind. Yeah, fuck it, fuck it, fuck it. Um, I'm excited to see where Teva goes. It seems like they're trying to flesh him out a little bit more. He's a cool character. He's I mean, a great he's, character. He, they, they do a lot with... Th- this season seems like... Uh, the things that I like about it are the characters that are like barely on screen uh, still kind of get like a little bit. Yeah. Um, Like, Paz... In this episode, I liked more than the last episode where he's just like, here's my son, and then runs into battle. Um, and in this one, like, he gives the whole speech and then kind of turns around and uh, you, like, expect him to be like, nah, fuck these guys. Uh, why do we keep doing shit for them? Yeah. And then he turns around and he's just like, yeah, because we're Mandalorians. Like, yeah, of course we'll do it. They saved my son. What What the fuck are you doing? Yeah, that and, speech was great. And I, I kind of knew where it was going, and I kind of was like, oh, this is going to be cheesy. And it got to the end of it, and I was like, no, it's actually pretty good. Yeah. Um, and, but I just loved that it came around, and he was like, we will lay our lives down again. And why? Because we are Mandalorians. That's what we do. And it's like, oh. Aw, pause. And but the other thing is the other thing that I've noticed about this season is I think one of the reasons I like this season a little bit less, and it is a little bit looser writing wise than the other ones. Like that's obviously the problem. But I think that my real problem is because I can forgive Star Wars for a lot of dumb shit. Is there's not like any fun characters with them. And not to say that I don't like Bo and I don't like Paz and I don't like Teva. Um, but, like, all the other episodes is he's, like, this kind of lone, quiet badass. He goes on an adventure with somebody who's, like, a m- more colorful character, helps them out with their problems and moves on. Yeah. Here he's in one place with a bunch of other silent badasses. And, like, other than, like, a quick talk with, like, Paley Moto at the beginning of the season... Um, and like Grief Karg is in this episode, they don't have anybody for him to really bounce off of who's like super charismatic. And it works for this episode because this is the badass gunfight, like war in the city kind of episode. But I think th- I'm realizing that that's my issue with this season. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's not like, cause like you have like, uh, in the other ones, even Fennec's kind of fun. Um, but you have like, 
uh when he go when he Bill Burr is not in it um so far um you don't have a whole lot of grief carga you don't have a whole lot of Paley Moto um there's no like there's no like uh Queel cuz he's dead um they haven't made an IG11 yet like there, there's nobody who's like kind of goofy for him to bounce off of yeah 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 no, I completely get that. Um, I don't know. I, I, I love seeing the New Republic stuff because the the idea of the New Republic was always so attractive to me as somebody who wanted the good guys to keep just keep going and having adventures after and episode it, yeah. six. And it's what they should lean into because that's the era. Yeah. but and, and then, like, Seven comes along and then immediately destroys the entire New Republic. And I was mm-hmm. like, aw, I wanted to see that. But, like... I don't know. They they kind of established how the New Republic doesn't have like a proper army, right? And I was like, that seems weird. Well, this That's not what I remember from the books. This is sort of a way to almost prequelify the New Republic in a way now. Yeah, because in which hundred percent on board for yeah, you, uh, yeah. Star Wars has always been like a non collinear storyline, and that's why you have an issue with um, uh, D was talking about on the first or second episode. Um, or no, just the first episode. He was only on, uh, only on the first one. Um, but D was saying that, um, like they're not, they don't feel like they're building towards anything. And it's like, well, they're building towards stuff. It's just the stuff that they've done already, which makes it weird. Yeah. Um, and it makes it hard to do sort of the Marvel thing when you're like, like if you watched a, a whole season of a show of like, Luke building up the Jedi Order, eventually in the back of your head, you're like, well, Kylo Ren kills all these people. Yeah. Um, and, like, that's not horrible because we did that already. Mm-hmm. And it, it works fine. Do but, you remember that scene when Rey was like, this blade has committed uh, atrocious crimes. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, the lightsaber she has is the one that slaughtered younglings. Yeah. You know? Just get over it. Move just, on. Just saying. Who cares? Just just saying. A, it's a cool one, though. It's a cooler blade. It shines. It's blue. Mm, yeah, <laughs> that makes. I'm it not saying that. I'm saying the 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 blade thing being super evil and mm-hmm. evil atrocities were committed with this blade. Uh, okay, cool. Do you know what was committed with the other blade <laughs> that you're holding in your other hand? No, it's different because Luke held it a little bit. Oh, right, 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 yeah, right. So it's fine. So all of the 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 stormtroopers he murdered washed also, away the blood of the also children. Also, remember, remember, uh, Anakin. Anakin redeemed himself, so it gets rid of the. It it, it was a take back season. I see. Oh, yeah. he okay. Did, it, you don't remember the take scene? Take see backsies. Yeah, Darth Vader says take see backsies right before he dies, and and then when all the he's force like, goes, tell your sister you were right about me. Take see backsies, <laughs> and then when all the <laughs> and then when all the the force ghosts of all the children show up around him, he just go. They're like, we forgive you. And then, the, and then the music went. Dun, 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 it's a directed the by George Lucas. The kids weren't one with the force yet. They aren't gonna be <laughs> ghosts. They're just gone. Then you don't have to worry about it. Is what I'm hearing. Directed by George Lucas. <laughs> oh shit! All right, is um, Star Wars stupid? Rick McCallum. That's the name you were trying to think of. I think. No, it starts with an F. Oh, oh, Fuentes. No. No, what? I have no idea what you're thinking of. I think you might be thinking of Nick Fuentes, who's a Nazi. <laughs> oh, you know what? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> That's who that is. I'm going to apologize to <laughs> Rick, whoever you are, for confusing you with a, a known uh, fascist. God, God, I hope Nick Fuentes doesn't do a fucking Star Wars movie. <laughs> All right, I'm excited for the next episode. We got three left, and the next one was directed by Bryce Dallas Howard. Oh. So far... She's kind of knocked into the park with the, park with the episode. She's been doing she pretty well. Uh, every time her name shows up, she is doing an episode that I liked. So I like her name whenever it gets brought up outside of Jurassic Park. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's that's how I feel about Bryce Dallas Howard. That's fair. She's great when she's not in Jurassic Park. And Jurassic uh, World. Mm-hmm. Got it. Cool. Anyway, that concludes this episode of the podcast. Uh, I'm excited for episode six. Troy, you excited for episode six? Yeah, I, I think that I have turned the corner on this season. I think that I am, uh, after this episode specifically, I am liking again, I like that Vane is alive somewhere. 
um, and and makes it out of here. I'm glad that the guy that we all thought all collectively said looks like shit is dead. Oh <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, I'm glad he was so fucking stupid that he just kept going into a very losing battle. <sighs> it's Pirates like, aren't know, smart. It's the piratey villain thing to do, you know. It's fine. Is it? Yeah, but I'm saying that like if like Moff Gideon did it, you'd be like, this is dumb. But like Moff Gideon only has the flawless plans of going into a different room when you think that he's going to be in a different room. Mm. You know, like, he's like, oh, they thought I was going to be up on the bridge, but actually I'm down what here. What if the secret bad guy is Homelander Oh, in a crazy crossover? I think that would be fucking terrible. <laughs> 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 then you would get your rape in your Star Wars. Oh, no. oh, God, that's disgusting. Anyway, that's it for this episode of the podcast. I am going to go take a shower, a very long shower. Um, if you like us, leave us a kind review on your favorite podcasting platform. Give us please, five stars. Please like, us. like us. Please like us. Our confidence is so low. We only do this podcast for internet validation. We want So we need you guys yeah. to, to come together and and just hold hands and sing along. If you if you subscribe to the YouTube channel, if you leave a like on, on whatever platform you're on, if you leave a comment we're on any platform you're on, we will invite you personally to our birthday parties. That's not true. Don't advertise that. <laughs> Nobody is coming to my birthday party. My ideal birthday party is me alone at home with a six pack. You I'm will. Kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You will be able to sit on the couch and crack open a cold one with Jeff. On but you birthday. cannot talk or look at me. <laughs> 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 Just stare forward at the screen, please. Stare forward at the screen, which is off. <laughs> <laughs> that is what you get. Troy's birthday party is worse. They're going to make you learn X-Wing. Oh, I will absolutely make you learn X-Wing. Yeah, that's terrible. Don't do not do that. Get out your dials, folks. Oh, man, I love the dials. The dials. What happened to the good old days where we rolled dice? You do also roll dice. Oh, my God, I forgot. And there's cards. <laughs>